Okay, so the orchids that I have before you today are the same exact orchids from the same variety, which is the Tulumnia orchids, to the same type, which is the Tequila Sunrise, purchased at the same place, and they were both in the same exact condition when I purchased them. And the only difference between the two is the fact that I kept both of these in different conditions. One orchid was actually given the conditions very similar to the natural habitat that it would be found in nature. While this other orchid was given quite a considerable difference. Okay, so let us now take a closer look at each of these orchids. This particular orchid was kept in a climate that was very different to what it is found normally in its natural habitat. This was kept in an office building and the temperatures for this orchid, it received 73 to about 75 degrees and this was consistent throughout the day and the night. Also the type of lighting this orchid received was very moderate, similar to what a Phalaenopsis would receive. So now I did water this orchid very well, watering it once to even twice a day. And as we take a very close look at these leaves, you will see that they are very shriveled. You definitely can tell that they are flimsy. They're not stiff at all. Very flattened. There's no plump to it. And just really a lot of indications that the leaves, the foliage is not healthy at all. And usually when you begin to see a lot of wrinkling in the leaves, it is a sign that the orchid is not receiving enough watering. But, but again, as I stated, I did give this orchid enough water. So that leads me to believe that it was for other reasons. And I'm thinking because it did not receive the proper lighting and it also did not receive the proper temperature conditions. So therefore this orchid did not have the proper energy and it just did not sustain a very healthy fo foliage and it's definitely showing the stress on this plant right here. Okay, so now let's take a closer look of the orchid that I actually kept in my garden and provided it with the closest temperature as it would be found in nature. Now, as you can see, such a big difference. I mean, take a look at that. The foliage is definitely has a lot more firmness to it, a lot waxier. You're not seeing all of the wrinkles as the other ones had. The foliage definitely looks very, very healthy. And it is just a happy camper, as you see. So a definite difference in these foliage. Okay, so now we're going to be taking a look at the blossoms. But now keep in mind, I've had these orchids for a while now, and they have been in bloom for quite some time. So you're seeing a lot of spent blossoms, and of course it is now beginning to fade away. But let's still take a close look at these blossoms. As you can see here, folks, it does have its blossoms, but it's really dwindling. The orchid colors are actually very, very faded. And of course the blossoms don't look very, very healthy. And you're not really finding any new growth on this orchid spike at all. Now what I did note is it does appear that a branch or a spikelet might come out of there. But other than that, no real evident growth. Okay, now this is the Tulumnia, of course, again, that was left in my garden given the most natural condition. So as you can see, there are many, many more blossoms still left. So it really retained a lot of its blossoms. Also, if we take a look at the actual flowers itself, you will see more of a vibrant color in the orchid. And in regards to the new growth, the branches and the spikelets, oh my. Take a look at this, folks. The one that received the appropriate lighting has a whole bunch of new growth, new branches of flowers coming out. So indeed, this orchid right here was receiving so much light 
and was very, very happy and had enough energy to produce all of this new growth with new buds. What a great reward. And I actually counted nine spikelets all together versus the other one which really had none. So indeed, there is a substantial difference in the two, in the health condition, and also in the fact that the one that was left in the garden, you are really getting the most out of your orchid in the regards of growth and also beauty. So folks, one of the most important things that I did learn in this experiment right here is the fact that although both orchids have survived, and both orchids have maintained, there definitely is a difference between if you give the orchid the closest condition to what it would receive in nature, and of course, if you do not. Indeed, there is quite a difference. So, if you guys want to get the most out of your orchids, then of course it is important for you to do your research and find out exactly where the orchid comes from, what habitat, what lighting conditions, watering conditions, and also type of fertilization, medium, etc., so on and so forth, so that you are capable of just creating such a healthy orchid that's long-lasting and definitely provides you such beauty. So indeed, folks, research your orchids and, of course, give it the best chance possible. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to yet another orchid adventure. And of course, stay tuned for more.